So today we will uh, discuss a new topic, and this is uh, two more binyanim, and these binyanim are Hithil and Ghofar. And I need to tell you that um, these uh, binyans are a little bit more complicated than the previous ones. And uh, the most problematic issue with the translation of the of this Gifil and Gofal Binyanim. And the problem is that we do not have um, we do not have similar construction in the Western languages. But if you are familiar with the Arabic language, in Arabic language we have uh, the same system, uh, but in Western languages we do not have um, this kind of construction or this kind of category. That is why it is a little bit complicated to translate gifil and gofal verbs. And sometimes we need to make, um, to find an expression to convey the meaning of this stem. So what is the gifil and gofal stems? The basic idea behind uh, gifil and gofal is causative 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 stem. So what does it mean causative? Causative means that I do not perform an action uh, myself, but I cause somebody else to do this action, to perform an action. So uh, the subject is a cause of the action, but not an executor of the action. So is it clear so far? So I, yes, will just, I will give you just a simple example. Samuel made Saul a king over Israel. So in, in Hebrew, it, it would look like this. Shmuel himlich et Shaul al Israel. So Shmuel is clear. This is uh, Samuel. And this word is himlich. And himlich is in causative vinyan, in uh, gifil. So uh, what happens? Uh, uh, this uh, root is malach, to reign, to rule. But Samuel didn't, uh, didn't become a ruler. So he, he didn't become a king, but he was a cause why uh, Saul became a king of Israel. So do you see, this is a, an example of the causative uh, binyan. So uh, the, the root is malach, to rule, to reign, but Samuel didn't reign himself, but he was a cause uh, of, for somebody else to rule or to be a king. Uh, another example is a very, very famous example, which happens and uh, which occurs very often in the Hebrew Bible. And sometimes uh, the scholars who translate the Bible have some, some difficulties to translate it. Because as I told you, we do not have any, uh, anything like this in the Western languages. Uh, so in, in English, when Seth had lived 105 years, he fathered, he fathered Enosh. So let us look at the Hebrew text. Vayhi shed Seth. Chamesh shanim, five years. U me'at shana, and 100 years. So when shed, set was 105 years. Va yo let, and this is the root yalat, to give birth. But it is again in uh, gifil stem. So va yo led at Enosh. So what happens? Um, Seth didn't uh, give birth a son because man cannot do this, but he was a cause why Enosh was born. So is it clear now? Yes, proof. Okay. So in this case, you can see that it's very difficult to translate it into English and uh, the translators need to find some, some expressions how to do this because we do not have uh, similar constructions. 
So one more example. Then Moses uh, went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo uh, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land Gilead as far as down. So let us look at the Hebrew text. Vaya'al, uh, this is the root Allah to go up. Vaya'al Moshe me arbot from me, this is mean, from, and Erev is a kind of a plain, uh, from the plain of Moab, El Har Nevo, to the mountain Nevo. Rosh, this is head or top, uh, ha Pisga, uh, the, the top of Pisga, Asher, which is Alpene uh, Yericho. Uh, this is Alpene, just opposite or um, upon the face like this, or opposite to the face of Jericho. So in front of Jericho, we can, we can also say. And uh, pay attention to this word, va ya re u, sorry, va ya re hu, va ya re hu. So this word again is an gifil stem, and this word is ra'a, to see, ra'a, to see. But in gifil, in gifil, so in, in kal, it would be I see, or I, I saw. But in gifil, I didn't see myself but I make somebody else to see. And in this case, the best way to translate is, is to show. So do you see in, in Gifil, it is uh, Ra'a is uh, to show. So do you see uh, this word Ra'a is very interesting because in Kal is to see, in Nifal is uh, to appear, and in Gifil it is to show. So I hope you understood the difference between uh, the meaning of uh, the difference between between the meaning of the same verb in kal and in gifil. So gifil is always a causative stem. Uh, the subject doesn't perform an action, an action, but he is a cause why uh, why somebody else performed the action. So now we can see the uh, difference between the meaning of kal and gefil stems for the same word. For example, bo, this root means to go, to go in, to come. Uh, but in gefil, it would be to bring or to let somebody come in. Uh, so do you see the difference? Uh, to go, to bring. In uh, the, the root mut or mot, to die, uh, to die in Kal. But in Gifil, it doesn't mean that I die, but I made somebody else to die. So in this case, we can translate it as to kill. Uh, Shuf, to come back, to return. Heshiv in Gifil, to bring back, to carry back, to lead back. So in, it is not myself who came back, but I bring back something else or somebody else. Uh, yada, to know. Hodi, to let someone know, to inform. Uh, yatsa, to come out. And Hotsi, to bring out. Okay? Is it clear so far? Very clear, Prof. Okay, very well. So I only have a question. Yes, please. You you are mentioning of he feel and give feel. Is it the pronunciation uh, issue or it is they 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 work the same thing? Give I hear give feel and he feel. Is it the same thing? Oh no, this is the same. He feel is the same. It's just a matter of pronunciation. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, but Thank we you. we speak about two binyanim, he feel and ho fal. So these are two okay. different things. Okay. Okay. So some words, uh, some words occur uh, predominantly in causative stems, like for example, nagit or sorry, nagat, but of course it doesn't occur in kal, so that is why it doesn't have vowels here. And nahat to strike, to hit, navat to look, uh, rik or rek to pull out. 
uh, they have some of them have some forms, but just single forms in some of other binyanim, but mostly they occur only in um, in Hifil or Hofal. Uh, but of course, there are some others, and uh, we will uh, meet them a little bit later. So now let's see how the Gefil conjugation is, is made. Uh, so it's uh, on the first side, it is quite easy because for example, Katal will always have this distinctive feature prefix he. So in, in all the forms prefix he uh, in Katal conjugation, I will indicate that this is a uh, uh, Hifil Binyanim. Uh, but uh, yes, a another issue that is also like a feature of uh, Gifil is uh, the vowel hirik yod between second and third radical. But this vowel appears only uh, when uh, vocal suffix is added to the word or there is no suffix. But when we have a consonantal suffix like this one, uh, hiktalta. So we do not have this vowel, but we have only the patach here. And do you see if we don't have, uh, if the suffix is consonantal, so we do not have this uh, hirikyota. But if it is uh, vocal or there is no suffix at all, so we will, we will have it. And the same is here, hikti lu. So the suffix is vocal, that is why we have uh, hirik yod. Uh, hik tal tem, hik tal tem. So in this case, we do not have uh, hirik yod because the suffix is consonantal. Uh, so that is why it is very easy to memorize the conjugation. We just need to remember this issue about uh, yud and prefix he, and katal conjugation doesn't uh, have any, any problems. Let's go to Yiktol conjugation. So I hope it, it is clear so far. Excellent. In, yes. It's clear, Prof. Okay. Is, is, it, is it possible to increase the font? Because uh, some of us are I'm stretching too much to see those, those letters. Okay. Okay. At least there. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now uh, let's pay attention to the translation because this also. Uh, can can cause some problems. So he till he caused to kill. He la she caused to kill. He talta you caused to kill. He talt you uh, of course feminine uh, singular caused to kill and he talti I caused to kill. So I, I didn't kill myself, but I did it. I made somebody else to do this. And uh, we have uh, the same uh, conjugation here and the translation for your convenience. So then let us go to Yiktol conjugation. Uh, Yiktol conjugation also has some uh, uh, specific feature. This patach will indicate that this is Yiktol, Yaktil. And we will have uh, uh, the same rule for hirik yud. So if you don't have a suffix or the suffix is vocal, like in this case, we will have hirik yud in, in, the, in the stem, in the, in the root. But if in this case, uh, there is the, the suffix is not vocal, but it starts with the consonantal. So in this case, we do not have hirik yod. Um, so uh, it is very clear, we have this patach, in the prefix everywhere. And uh, if the suffix is vocal, we have hirik yod. We have hirik yod, or there is no suffix at all. Uh, so that is why it's not, it's not difficult to memorize this conjugation as well. And the translation is the same. He will cause to kill, she will cause to kill, and so on and so forth. So uh, the subject is not the performer of the action, but he is the reason why the action is perform. So the distinctive characteristics I explained already. Uh, yes, and now it's some important issue about uh, how the Vyiktol form is, is done. So Yiktol 
of the field has a shortened form. And this uh, shortened form, uh, so this is the full form, you can see yak till, and this is the shortened form. And the vital form is done with the shortened one, with this one. So if we want to make a vital, so vital would be a vyagdel instead of vyagdil. So this is the, the third person, uh, masculine singular, and it's supposed to have uh, hirukiyot because there is no suffix at all here. But uh, instead of this, uh, the vyagdel form is formed from the shortened. Uh, form of uh, yiktol and shorten form doesn't, doesn't have hirukiot but has only the tsere. So uh, we need to remember this because sometimes uh, we can expect this hirukiot but it is not it is not there. Okay, uh, so now let's go to imperative. How imperative is done? So imperative is done is in very similar way. We can Excuse see. Me, yes, yes, please. I was trying to look at the, he caused it to kill and he killed. It sounds as if it is the same meaning, though here you only bring in the word cause to kill. Is or it not the same? Is, is he caused to kill and killing, he killed. Are they not the same? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, this is the difference between yes. Hal and Gifil. Because okay. in Gefil's stem, uh, the subject doesn't perform an action. So, for example, maybe uh, the, the king oh. uh, gave an order to kill. Okay. You understand? But he didn't yeah. he kill, uh, he kill, didn't kill himself. Okay. But okay. because it's of clear him, now. somebody mm. was killed. Okay. It's clear okay. now. Thank you. No problem. So now let's go to the uh, imperative. So imperative is done very similar way as uh, the imperative of other stems are done. So what we need to do, we need to take uh, the yikto to remove the suffix, or sorry, to remove the prefix, and instead of this uh, prefix to put another one. And the prefix of imperative is ha. So just uh, take the yiktol stem, uh, remove the suffix of yiktol, and instead of it, put uh, suffix a, a ha, and we will have imperative. So this uh, ha will be a kind of uh, distinctive feature, which will indicate that we have imperative, imperative here. Uh, so it's very similar to imperative of nifal, but the different suffix is there. In, in imperative nifal, we have suffix he, but in a he feel imperative, we have suffix ha. Okay, infinitive. Infinitive is done the same as uh, infinitive construct as uh, uh, imperative of second masculine singular, and just the same prefix ha, and uh, we have uh, the, the root of yikto and uh, the same. And uh, do you see it will be the same, it will have the same form as uh, second masculine singular, infinitive or sorry, imperative. And only the context will help us to understand uh, which stem or which aspect is, is here. Uh, the participle is very easy to recognize. Uh, the prefix mem, with the uh, vowel patach will indicate that this is a participle. So uh, it is not very difficult to, uh, to, to find the participle in the text. Uh, now, if everything is clear, we can move to the hofal, hofal stem. Or if you want to ask any questions, we can do this. Okay. Hello. Yes. So if I have quoted you clearly, the the imperative is he. Um, no, imperative prefix is and, and the infinitive is her. 
No, no, no. Both of them is a ha. Okay. So okay. Uh, it, it, it is in the nifal, the prefix is he. But okay. in he feel, the prefix is a ha. And this okay. patak will be always an indicator then we uh, have uh, that this is uh, causative binyan. Uh, okay. okay. So it's always ha. Thank you. Okay, let's go to hofal. A uh, hofal, the meaning of hofal is very, is very simple. A uh, hofal is just a passive stem of hifil. So what does it mean? If uh, the verb if in uh, hifil is active, uh, he caused to kill, uh, but in passive, it will be he was caused to kill. So we just put everything in passive and that's all. And uh, the, the formation of the uh, stem is very also um, simple. I mean, it's very easy to, to understand it. Uh, it will have uh, the prefix ho. Pay attention that kamets here is not kamets, but here it is Kamets hatuf and it should be pronounced as o. Uh, do you see? I provided transliteration for you so that you can, uh, so you will not confuse uh, this kamets with kamets hatuf. The, the, I mean, this kamets hatuf with kamets. So it is hok tal, hok talta, hok tal, uh, hok tala, sorry, hok talta, uh, hok talt, hok talti. And the meaning, as you see, is passive. He was caused to kill, she was caused to kill, you were caused to kill, and I was caused to kill. So the same is true for the uh, plural conjugation. Hoktelu, uh, hoktaltem, hoktalten, hoktalnu, hoktalnu, hoktalnu. We were caused to kill. So this is uh, quite easy. And in a yikto, we have the same. Do you see this is prefix ha? And instead of ha, we will have just a yud or taf or aleph or nun. So a yok tau, tok tau, tok tau, tok teli, uh, yok tau, uh, yok te lu, tok talna, tok te lu, tok talna, nok tau. So pay attention that everywhere we will have kamets hatuf uh, as a well while of the performative. Uh, Question. Yes, please. Uh, quite often you have said when uh, kamets is followed by shewa, it is kamets hatuf. Yes. Should we take it as a rule wherever yes. we find it? Oh, do you see? It is not always the rule. Okay. But, uh, yes. <laughs> But uh, the rule is uh, like this. So a kamets in a closed unaccented syllable is kamets hatuf. And in most of the cases, uh, it is when we have uh, kamets which is followed by shiva. But it is not always the case. It okay. is not always the case. Sometimes it is, uh, it could be like in other verbs, like um, katelu or katela. Uh, the kamets could be kamets, and in this case, shava would be pronounced, and it will be different a little bit. So it is not like 100% a rule, okay. but okay. in many cases, it will work. So in this All case, right. it works very well. So it's clear that this is kamets hatuf. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, infinitive. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is good for hofal? We don't have imperative, infinitive construct jassif and cohortative because it is a passive stem and it's very difficult to have these forms or these categories in, in the passive stem. We just have infinitive absolute hoktel, but it also doesn't occur very, very often. So we just need to remember that it exists, exists, but it, it is not very, very common. And participle, participle is the same. We need to add prefix mem, and the vowel is again kamets hatuf, and we will have moktal, moktalet, moktalim, and moktalot, uh, being caused to kill, being caused to kill. But of course, 
the participle participle is uh, could be translated differently depending on the context it could be even the verb i mean the predicate of the sentence or it could be just like adjective so it or even as a subject so it depends on the on the context uh, okay so now um, we just covered uh, all this basic material about the hifil and hofal and uh, now we need to go to the uh, to the weak verbs and the weak verbs uh, can cause a lot of troubles for us for understanding uh, the specific features of uh, hifil and hofal and uh, immediately we can understand one of the problem of gifil and gofal, that if the first letter of the root of the verb is guttural or rash, in this case, shava uh, cannot be, uh, they cannot take the shava. So what happens in this case, if they cannot take a shava, uh, they take a compound shava. So what does it mean compound shiva? The shiva which is uh, with the vowel. Uh, most usually it is hatef sego. And in this case, uh, the uh, vowel of the performative would be the same as uh, the, the vowel of the compound shiva. So it should be like this. He mid, he mid. But uh, instead of this, because it is impossible to have uh, shiva here, instead of this, uh, it will be he emit, he emit. So the uh, prefix took the vowel of the shiva, compound shiva, and here we have compound shiva, and we have this, uh, this verb. Or he e vir instead of he vir. He e la instead of he la and so on and so forth. So we can see that if it is uh, first letter is guttural, so in this case, we need to put here a compound shava, most probably hatef sego. Uh, in yiktol, uh, the vowel, the most usual vowel is hatef patach. So, and the same, the same rule we have, we have here for, for the yiktol. So if the first, uh, radical or the first consonant is uh, guttural or rash. Uh, so in hofal, um, something similar happened. Uh, if the first uh, letter is uh, guttural or rash, so we will have kamets uh, hatef, and it is pronounced as o, and of course the vowel of the prefix is o as well. Yo o mat. Uh, he will be present, or uh, he will be devoted for destruction from the root haram. So if the first uh, uh, letter, the first radical of the root is yod, so in this case, uh, the original vav appears in all forms of gefil and gofal. So it will be ho shif, it is from yashav, to sit, to dwell, ho shi wa, Aho shafta, aho shaft, and so on and so forth. So we can see that in all forms we can have this ho, or in gofal we will have the same but u. And the same is in yiktol. So this original wav will appear in all forms of gifil and gofal. Uh, gifil imperative for the roots with the first yod is, uh, would be uh, ho shef, ho shi vi, ho shi vu, and ho shef na. So this is imperative. And uh, now uh, the verbs with the first noon. And with the first noon, we also will have assimilation uh, because of this uh, silent shiva, which appears in the, in the gifil. Uh, first uh, noon and the second letter will assimilate together. Like for example, in this case, nagash, hingish, it is supposed to be hingish, but noon and gimel assimilated and we have only gimel with dagish forte. And the final form would be he uh, gish, 
he gives. And now I would like to pay your special attention to some verbs, especially the verbs uh, which have the first noon and the last, uh, the last hey, the third hey. In some forms of these verbs, uh, both noon and hey uh, disappear, and only the middle letter, uh, middle radical, uh, remain in the word. For example, this root naha means to strike. In he feel perfect, first uh, common singular, it will be he ke ti. So do you see there is no noon and there is no yud. And in some cases, it's very, very difficult to recognize those, those verbs. Or in gefil vayekto, vayaach. So no noon, no hey. And we just need to understand that this is uh, the root nacha and how we can understand uh, so how we can get get it or uh, the root nata and he feel like to would be via at so the same there is no noon no hey and only one middle radical remained um, in, in the in the form and uh, he feel participle so we have the same phenomenon when both letters disappear so now let's move to the verbs with the second vav. And uh, this is also a little bit complicated issue because they have many, many interesting details. Uh, first of all, what we need to remember. So they uh, lose this second vav in many forms, almost in all forms. And uh, instead of this uh, vav, second vav, in some forms, they will have hirikyut. The performative is tsere in katal and kametz in yikto. Uh, tok, uh, tak, ki, tak, takim, takim. Uh, when the consonantal suffix is added in katal, the connecting vowel appears between the root and the suffix. So do you see this one also very interesting? But what is also interesting, when this connecting vowel appears, the uh, vowel of the prefix is shortened. So it is not, uh, it is not kamets or patah, but it is patah, head of patah. So uh, this is what happens with the root. And in Hofal, we will have U, always U. And uh, this is a distinctive feature of, of Hofal, the verbs, uh, the, hollow, the hollow verbs. Okay, this is the end of the lecture notes. Do you have any questions? I understand that uh, this topic could be uh, a little bit uh, complicated because we have many, many uh, details and it's very difficult sometimes to keep all of them in mind. But what we need as always, we need just to practice. And the more we practice, the better for us to recognize those verbs. Um, okay, so now uh, let's try to, to practice. <clears throat>